What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're doing another Pop Complex unboxing. So today we have the Loot Crate exclusive NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1990 movie Danny Pennington. So stay tuned guys. My name is Matt and this is the Pop Complex. You are here because the outside world rejects you. This is your family. Welcome back once again, ladies and gents, to the Pop Complex. As I stated before, we are going to be unboxing the Loot Crate exclusive NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Danny Pennington. Uh, so we'll take a closer look, guys, at the packaging. First of all, here is the official Loot Crate exclusive uh, sticker. And now this figure is the first in a series of uh, four Loot Crates that... Uh, uh, NECA is putting out in conjunction with their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles license. So Danny Pennington is the first exclusive figure uh, from crate number one. So we will take a closer look guys at the packaging. We have that uh, classic open window style uh, box with the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles poster artwork with the four turtles peeking out uh, from the sewer. The Nickelodeon logo there. As you can see the Danny figure there inside and he does come with an alternate head and he does look like he comes with his Walkman and, uh, and headphones. And we also have the classic Sid Vicious t-shirt that he wore in the film. So we'll flip it around to the side here and we have a closer look at Danny uh, just uh, with the alternate head without the Foot Clan bandana and he does have his Walkman and headphones on there. On the other side, we have a smaller shot there of Danny, looks like just from a different angle without the bandana and the Walkman. And then up here at the top, uh, we have the Danny head wearing the Foot Clan bandana when he did join the Foot Clan in the film. So as you look here, guys, we have some more photography. Uh, we have Danny with uh, the NECA Casey Jones there in the background. Uh, Danny speaking with Splinter, the NECA uh, movie Splinter from the film. And then it looks like we have Danny with his Foot Clan bandana and he's sort of in a fighting pose. And we have a little bio there that you can read about the Turtles live action film and a little bit about Danny there. You can pause and read that if you'd like. And then we have the NECA logo as we've seen before in the classic FHE style uh, to mimic the VHS. Uh, distribution, the artwork from the FHE on the uh, corner of the original VHS sleeve. And for all of you, uh, all of you guys that had that tape as a kid, uh, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And that should look very nostalgic for you. Here on the bottom is just the barcode and legal information there. And there is Danny. So we won't waste any more time, guys. We will get Danny out of the packaging. Stay tuned. All right, guys, and we're back with Danny Pennington out of the packaging. Uh, so I've taken a closer look at the figure just out of the packaging. It's uh, it's a decent figure. It's uh, nothing really that, that blows me away about this particular figure. It, he is what he is. He is Danny uh, with his iconic appearance from the film. Uh, so I went ahead and swapped out the head with the alternate head that does not have the Foot Clan bandana. I do prefer the expression on his face uh, more. It looks more realistic and believable, I think, than the uh, expression on his uh, face with the Foot Clan bandana. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys this. Um, he, he just he looks a little bewildered, his expression uh, with this head. Um, so I don't know. It just, it just looks funny to me. It looks a little strange. So, um, I do prefer, uh, this classic look. He just looks kind of serious, um, kind of, uh, stoic and brooding, uh, just like he did in the film. So I prefer this head, uh, but there's the alternate head and I'll get a close up shot there, guys. You can see the Foot Clan, uh, logo, uh, right there on the bandana as he wore in the film when he did. Um, accept the initiation and join the Foot Clan in the film. And uh, one thing I do notice about both of these heads, guys, and you can really tell it here on the camera, 
uh, but it is this way in uh, in real life as well. If you see these uh, these heads in person, they really look very glossy, um, and I think that they look a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit too glossy for skin. It, it almost gives the appearance that he's kind of sweaty, which is uh, kind of strange, but uh, there's uh, both heads, and I'll spin this around so you can take a closer look at the back, the detail on the hair and the bandana in the back. Uh, but there is Danny's alternate head. And around to the back so that you can see the hair. Even the hair looks very glossy. I think it's, it's very strange. And it, even in person, it has that really high glossy sparkly sheen to it. So the head is on a ball joint, a typical uh, NECA ball joint for a figure like this. He doesn't get too much, um, like he can't look up too much within the restrictions. Um, it's not really the hair that I'm seeing as much that's hindering it. It just seems to be the, um, the sculpt of the socket and the bottom of the head just restricts the movement. Uh, it's not really more so much of a ball joint on the end of the peg, but just a straight, uh, slightly uh, cut peg that you see here. And I, I bet that's what's restricting the movement. But he can get a full 360 degrees, and he can get uh, that much that much range of motion going down. That's about as far down as he can look. See, it's kind of restricted there how far he can go up and down. But we'll zoom in here and you can see his uh, classic Sid Vicious t-shirt that he wore in the film. And uh, I think it's very cool that NECA was able to uh, get the rights to reproduce this image because uh, that's something that you don't usually think about when producing uh, toys like this is if there's a logo uh, or an image within the toy itself, not only would we uh, need to see NECA get the rights to the actor um, that played Danny to reproduce his likeness from the film, uh, but also the image of Sid Vicious from this t-shirt that Danny just happened to be wearing in the film. So that's really cool that they were able to recreate that. And as far as the arm articulation goes, you can see the cut here, guys. It looks like that um, the outer portion of the shirt is like a separate molded piece without the sleeves because you can see if you look up in there you can see his uh, his arm the ball joint for the shoulder um, is tucked up under this uh, sort of like an over smock sculpt for this shirt but uh, his sleeves are sculpted on his arm separately and there's quite a distinction uh, between the, the cut there uh, which I think it's a little jarring there's not a really a smooth transition from the shoulder to the actual sleeve that we see here. So I think that uh, that left a little bit to be desired um, on the uh, sculpting of the shirt, uh, but it seems to be a typical NECA arm ball joint. Now, can't really get much in the way of upward shoulder articulation within the confines here. It seems to be very, not very stiff, but just that's as far as it really goes there. Even even aside from independent of the, the sculpting stopping the range of motion here, uh, but he can, looks like he can get a full 360 degree range of motion at the shoulder, just not, not as much up and outward uh, with the shoulder. Now the elbow here we get a nice elbow swivel uh, there seems to be a pretty distinct cut there in the elbow joint as you can see uh, but he doesn't it's a single jointed elbow so he doesn't get much uh, as far as the way of you know bending his forearm all the way up to the bicep it looks like that's as far as it can go and that's about a 45 degree angle i would say uh, but it's a little jarring here to see uh, this sort of uh, hard cut here that sticks out for the elbow. And I know the first uh, Casey Jones that NECA did for um, the 1990 movie line uh, had similar uh, had similar joints in the elbows. But it just, to me, it looks a little strange. Uh, 
but he can move his arm almost straight up and down. Yeah, about, yeah, that's nearly straight up and down there for the elbow. And then the wrist is a uh, typical wrist swivel. You can see that he can get uh, some inward and outward for the angle, uh, but not, not a whole lot, I'm seeing. But he can get a full 360 degree rotation um, on the wrist there. And this, the other arm is the same way. Um, I think there's a, uh, there's probably an ab cut under this, uh, but you know, with this being a whole molded piece of the shirt, you can't really get too much twisting and, and posing there. And uh, looks like I'm seeing the, yes, the hips are on a ball joint. Looks like that's about as far out as you can get within the confines of this sculpted shirt. And then you can get some forward and backward within the range of this shirt. It kind of restricts a lot of his, uh, his movement there. Now the knees, looks like I'm getting a single single uh, jointed knee looks like that's about as far as we can go uh, with bending the knee back Bend it back forward you see the detail on the jeans there all of the folds and creases in the jeans and he does stand up reasonably well on his own without any assistance but uh, what i really think is cool is the uh the shoes, the high top shoes there, guys. Nice detail even on the laces on the side. Uh, not any detail on the bottom. You can see that he is pegged uh, to uh, use a stand if need be. And then we do have some ankle rocker action here. But, you know, again, with the way that these folds and creases where his pants end at the bottom here, they kind of restrict a lot of the movement that you could get. So as you can see, there's some slight forward and backward and side to side, but uh, moving this around, it's uh, pretty restricted by the sculpting here. So if you play around with this a little bit, you can get him to stand up reasonably well. So I'll spin the figure around to the back so you can get another good view of the back of his shirt, the backs of those awkward looking elbows and there's the back of the jeans. So the background that this figure did come with, the insert, is a generic uh, sewer uh, background. I believe this was maybe the same background used for the individual um, GameStop exclusive packaging for the four turtles, the four movie, 1990 movie turtles that were put out. I could be mistaken, I don't think I have those handy to take a look at, uh, but I feel like it, this was the same background that they used uh, for those turtles, which was the generic sewer, like the storm drain opening there uh, for those. And we've already looked at the extra head that he does come with, so the last thing that we'll take a look at um, is pretty simple. It is his uh, Walkman and his headphones. Now, if you guys have this or plan on opening it, I would recommend you be very, very highly uh, cautious when uh, manipulating this around because uh, this is almost like uh, just a, a tiny, uh, thin, leathery rubber piece that feels very fragile and it even looks very fragile right there as you can see guys as it attaches to the Walkman. So I would uh, exercise some caution when uh, manipulating that around and taking that out of the packaging. But here are the headphones. It's not, doesn't feel very solid at all. This feels just like a very rubbery, rubbery piece here. I mean, there, you would have no problem getting this uh, over his, over his head, which I will do right now. Yep, just like that, which I think that looks pretty decent. And then you can uh, pose the Walkman in his hands if you, should so desire to do that, uh, but we'll take a closer look at the detail. This looks like a typical uh, late 80s, early 90s Walkman, and he even has these up and down arrows on the back. I'm not sure if that detail is visible in the movie or not, but it is included here. So 
there is his one and only accessory. See? That's what he does when he wants to ignore me. He sticks his head in those things. I wonder where the hell he got those things anyway. Charles, give the kid a break. So all in all, guys, I can say that I'm not super impressed with this figure. I mean, he is what he is. It's it's just a, a plain uh, Danny figure. Um, there's not really many accessories that could be included uh, with this figure, um, but uh, it was a Loot Crate exclusive, and uh, Danny is a must-have character if you're looking to complete your NECA 1990 Turtles movie line. Uh, but uh, yeah, not really super impressed with the uh, sculpting, the paint job, the sheen, the shine on the face and the awkward looking elbows, the awkward looking cuts in the t-shirt. And I know that some fans have even said that uh, this figure of Danny is a lot shorter uh, than he should be. He should have been sculpted a little bit taller in relation to the... Uh, to the other human characters in the film, such as April, Judith Hogue, April, and Elias Coteus as uh, Casey Jones. Uh, I, I don't know right off the top of my head, guys, if that it really is the case. Let me know what your thoughts are on that in the comments, but I'm not really sure in the film how tall that this actor that played Danny is in relation to the other human uh, characters April and Casey. Let me know what you think guys in the comments, but I know he does look a little bit on the short side. He looks about maybe the same height as the four turtles, uh, but let me know what you guys think about that particular detail. So guys, I do appreciate you watching the video today. If you did like this video, please hit that like button and share the video out to your fellow turtle fans and toy and action figure collecting fans. It really helps the channel out. Most importantly, guys, if you aren't, aren't already subscribed to the channel, click that button down below and click the bell to be notified anytime that the Pop Complex uploads a new video. I guarantee you guys don't want to miss a thing. So remember, guys, it's no longer Danny. It's just Dan now, Dad. It's just Dan. Dad, it's just Dan now, okay? Dan. Thanks for watching and have a totally tubular day.